What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be solving the issue of getting traffic to your site but no sales, so you know purchases in return. So it's one of the most popular questions I get asked. In fact, somebody reach out and they'll say I've had 500 visits, 600 visits, but I've had no purchases. They'll then usually go on to ask me to review their Shopify store because that's where they think the problem lies. Whereas that's not always the case. It's typically in one of two places. And what you also have to take into consideration is the process in which a customer goes through from seeing your ad to actually making a purchase. When you kind of break the process down and identify where the problem lies, then it's a relatively quite an easy issue in fact to actually solve. And that's what we're gonna be going through in this video. So that being said, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new and let's jump straight into it. So the first step is you need to ask yourself two questions. The first question is what's the quality of the traffic you've sent to your store so far? If it's of poor quality, then it doesn't matter if you send 100,000 people to your site, you're still not gonna see many purchases, if any at all whatsoever. So countries, what I found in the past, such countries in kind of like South America, kind of East Asia, those sorts of countries typically convert like really, really low. Unless you're kind of focusing on England, Australia, Canada, and America, well then you can kind of hope to achieve in and around 2%, or at least that's what their average Shopify store is. Obviously that's gonna vary depending on how expensive your product is. If you're selling a product that's a thousand pounds versus a product that's 10 pounds, obviously you're gonna have a much higher conversion rate selling a cheaper of product versus a more expensive one. So that's the first question. What's the quality of your traffic? Number two is how many visits have you actually had to your website? Working on that 2% conversion rate then as an average, that works out as two orders for every 100 people. But what you have to take into account is if you're directing your traffic from Facebook, let's say as a new business with a new pixel, Facebook isn't gonna know who your ideal customer is. It's not gonna know what sorts of people will actually be buying your product. So the first few hundred people, if not the first thousand people it sends to your site are probably gonna be super low quality and they're not gonna be converting very high either. What you have to take into account as well is the more people who actually come to your site, then over time, everything averages out at that 2%. So whilst the first, say 5,000 people might only convert at say point half a percent, the next 5,000 people might convert a bit higher than that. So overall, those 10,000 people have converted at 2%. So they're the first two questions you need to ask yourself. Is it high quality traffic? And have you had, I would say, at least a thousand visits? If you're confident you can do both of those things, the next step is to identify the problem. And to identify the problem, then you need to understand the process in which a customer goes through from seeing your ad to making a purchase. So the first thing that happens is obviously the impression they see your ad. The next action they take is a link click. They click your link, your button, whatever it is, takes you to your site. Next thing is the view content event is triggered. Then it's add to cart. Then it's initiate checkout. Then it's add payment information. And then it's make a purchase. And when you kind of break this process down step by step and see where people are exiting that process, then it's pretty easy to identify. And then all you have to do is solve that particular problem. And then you'll see people kind of funnel down further through that process, ultimately to the point of making a purchase. So let's break down that process step by step then. So no matter where the process, the customer, sorry, is exiting the process for you, then hopefully we can come up with a solution. So number one is the impression. Somebody sees your ad and the first action they have to take is a link click. If nobody's clicking your link, then you need to look at your ad in a number of different ways. So number one, is there a clear call to action? And if there is, then look at the numbers on your ads. So again, this is gonna vary depending on who your audience and products and so many different factors. Um, but if you're achieving a link click through rate of over 2%, 2.5%, then you, that's pretty good in my opinion. And the second thing is a cost per link click of around 50p or at least under a pound anyway. If you're doing both of these things and your ads are achieving those numbers, then in my mind, your ads are doing their job and therefore you can move on to the next step of the purchase process. If they're not doing that job, then you need to look at a couple of things. Number one, have you got a clear call to action? So does the customer clearly see what they need to do if they wanna find out more information? If you've got a call to action, you're still not achieving those click through rates and the cost per link clicks that I just gave you, then it could be the product and or it could be the audience in which you're actually tagged in and or it could be your ad. Maybe your ad's just really dull and bland and it's not capturing people's attention. Next step then, when somebody's on your site, they've triggered the view content, they've clicked your link in your ad, sorry, they've triggered the view content, the next step in the purchase process is obviously to hit that add to cart button. If 
you're not getting any add to carts, then you know where the process is breaking down and it's breaking down on your product page. So you need to look at your product page, you need to get other people to look at your product page, get some genuine, honest feedback on it and essentially see what it could be that's putting customers off. So some typical things could be dodgy images that have Chinese logos on, it could just be a poorly designed website, it could be the price of your products, it could be too expensive, it could be too cheap. Um, it could just be your product descriptions, it could be the name and kind of overall feel of your site, it could be the fact that you've got no reviews. If you install certain apps like Lucky Orange which track what users do in and around your site, what pages they go to, what how much time they spend on that particular page, what you might find out is that the majority of your visitors go to your contact us page to check you out and see if you're legit. And if you find that is the case and you're not getting any purchases, then that's the point in which the process is breaking down. So you need to look at your contact us page, go through all the fundamentals, all the sorts of things you should have on there that a customer is looking for to basically legitimize your business to get them to trust you. So as a very minimum, you should have a custom domain email address. It should be support at help at your domain name.com. And then in my opinion, you should also have a telephone number and a physical address and a contact us form as well. If you want to succeed at this for many years to come then these are the sorts of things you need to be sorted um, and trust me the return on investment for how cheap you can get a virtual address and a virtual phone number and then the, the return on investment sorry in my opinion of far outweighs the actual cost of them so they're the first two steps broken down number one is how many people actually click in your ads so you need to be looking at your click-through rate and your link click just to kind of recap quickly because these are the two main places in which I see the process breaking down for most people and then number two is the add to cart page is nobody adding in your product to car and if that is the case then you need to be thinking about those things which I've just gone through. The third and final step in which I'm going to cover because once you get past this point then you have kind of like the default Shopify checkout and it's pretty good the default one to be fair um, not many people will leave the process at this stage. Um, so the next one is obviously once somebody's hit add to cart the traditional way is it will take them to the cart page and then they have to initiate checkout by hitting that checkout button so if somebody is exiting the process at that point, then you need to look at that cart page and find out if there's anything putting customers off. A big one I see is the default message on a lot of Shopify themes that says um, shipping, handling, and taxes, something like that. I can't remember the actual exact words, but it's like shipping, handling, taxes, um, calculated at checkout. If you have an announcement bar at the top, this is free shipping on all orders. They kind of contradict each other, they kind of counter each other, and ultimately it's going to put customers off. The mention of taxes as well in the UK, especially, is just not normal. When you go into Amazon, you don't see taxes added on at checkout, so it's not the sort of thing your customers will expect to see. And again, it will put people off. The most common reason, though, I see um, the process breaking down for most people at this point is because they'll advertise to say three or four different countries have three or four different currencies and then they have a base store currency for their site and what I've found from experience is when I'm running a site in British pounds trying to get Americans to actually buy in British pounds it's super hard to do especially do it consistently you'll get the odd one but being able to actually build a business on that fact um, is just not an issue so what you could do at that point so for example if you're running Facebook ads to the big countries and you're running your store in British pounds but you'll find that Americans are actually the ones coming onto your site most interested in your product then just redesign your site around a US dollar site and just focus on an American audience and with that being said guys I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to go through in this video hopefully I've covered all kind of eventualities for everybody watching this video um, I want to help you out as much as possible though so if there's something that you're still not quite sure on or there's something weird happening in your site leave a comment down below I see all comments and I respond Respond to all of them as well. Um, before you go, one last very quick thing. Um, if you are looking for a program to kind of simplify the process that you can work through self-paced, step-by-step, and get all the support and guidance along the way from myself, um, check, make sure you check out my Ecom Academy. There will be a link in the video description down below. Um, if you want to jump on the phone with me as well, so it will be me who speaks to you, we can hop on a phone call, go for any kind of questions, queries you have, just to make sure it's the right fit for you. Um, so if that sounds good to you, make sure you check out the first link in the description below. Apart from that, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, have an awesome weekend and I'll see you in the next one.